Okay, students, so now we are in the third week and the last two weeks we have been, I have sent you a set of three plus three lectures and a few PDFs for you, for you to get a better understanding of the derivations of the equations. Now we start with lecture seven. Uh, and this is continuing with the crystalline solid solutions and trying to understand a bit more of element partitioning uh, during the natural processes that occur in drops. And uh, we were, uh, we, when we last uh, uh, separated off, we had this situation where you have GA minus GA IB plus GA ideal minus GA0 uh, GA0 and this was equal to RTLN uh, XA plus RTLN uh, gamma so that's uh, where we stop last class. Uh, in which uh, the important point was this difference that means G idle, that means if you write it properly, it should be G idle is equal to G A0 plus R P L N X A. You see here gamma A is equal to 1. So, if gamma A equal to 1, then what we are taking here is ideal solution, then the free energy should be GA ideal. And therefore, this term is nothing but this term, RTL and XA. And uh, of course, as you can understand, this term would be RTL and gamma B. So, this term, both of these two terms constitutes the impurity the impurity component but the impurity component is divided into two parts now one is the ideal mixing part of changing uh, ideal mixing part that contributes to the impure free energy and this part which we now call the G excess mixing that means over and above ideal mixing and that is now equal to RTL and gamma so we can write now with some amount of confidence this term now we give a name to it and this we give as G excess mixing or we can write G A excess mixing is equal to R T L N gamma where G excess mixing is nothing but sorry not this one excess mixing this term is nothing but this one or have you understood? So this term now is we term it as excess mixing, that means more than non ideal mixing, and this is taken to be RTL and gamma A. So if you take the by analogy, by analogy of the equations, we can now write G excess mixing of the solid solution is essentially RT into XA ln gamma A plus XB ln gamma A. Like we have always written G ideal mixing we wrote as RT XA ln XA plus XB ln XB. Similarly for the mechanical mixture when we wrote we wrote XA into GA0 plus XB into GB0 it's the same thing. So this is the excess free energy mixing of the solution. Remember, this is the whole solution. That means this is A, B together. For the A, B solution, this is for the A component. If you take for the B component, then G, B excess mixing is equal to R, T, L, and gamma B. So if you take a binary, A, B binary, and find out what the excess mixing term looks like, then you have G excess mixing solid solution that means involving both the components 
you have RT XA ln gamma A plus XB ln gamma B. Or you can write XA ln gamma A plus XB ln gamma B. And this would be equal to G X is mixing a solid solution divided by R2. Now this is an important term. This is an important term. Uh, as you can see here, that at the end members, that means at A end member and at B end member, uh, at A end member, XP is equal to zero, right? And so therefore, this excess mixing, all this excess mixing terms become zero at the two end member components. Although in the middle part, they are a function of this component. Now, this term uh, essentially is an energy term. Uh, 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 just, 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 just a little bit of importance here. You see, R is in R, this term is in joules per Kelvin. T is in Kelvins. So if you take the denominator, the term is joules here. And any free energy term, the term is joule. So here you can see, you divide joules by joules. So essentially, this is the dimension of this quantity. That's very important to realize. This is a dimension of this quantity. You see here, Xa is a dimension of this quantity. Ln gamma A is a dimension of this quantity. So similarly for this. So this whole equation essentially is a dimension of this unit. Although, G excess mixing of the solid solution, this is an energy term. But because it is divided by RT, this becomes a dimension of this quantity. Now, if we, if we proceed a little further, now this term becomes, can we, we can, we will talk about this term in a very simple way. This can be made very complicated. And this term can be made more, it becomes always complicated, even for a binary. Say for example, we will take a very simple model called the regular solution model. Regular solution model. If we take sub-regular solution models, then the equation becomes a little more complex. If you take multi-component, three, four components, then the whole equations become even more complex. What happens is, the complexity is not the problem. But the problem is, as the equations become more and more complicated, you tend not to see through it. So what we will do is, we will restrict ourselves to a simple mixing, excess mixing, in a binary component involving the simplest model, which is called a regular solution model. So in this case, uh, we can take G excess mixing of solid solution, we can write in this form. We write it in this form. Now, what is this? We can try and understand this. Uh, 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 understand. Say, for example, when we are talking about mixing of A and B, what are we trying to do? Here? If you look at it physically, what are we trying to do? You have heard about coordination number. Say, for example, you know iron and magnesium. They are very similar ionic range. They are very similar. Mag iron is slightly larger than magnesium. 0 0.66 angstroms, 0 0.74 angstroms. Now, this 6 fold coordination means that a particular, and say, iron is coordinated by 6 nearest neighbor oxygen atoms. 
Now, when you say mixing solid solution, what does it mean? Both iron and magnesium have six fold coordination. Only thing, magnesium is slightly smaller than iron. Now, when you try to mix, essentially, what you're trying to do is replace iron by magnesium or magnesium by iron. When you do this, you're doing work. Essentially, that means you are changing a little bit because iron and magnesium are not identical. So, obviously, when you replace iron by magnesium or magnesium by iron, the some amount of work is done in order to account for the distortion, the changes of the nearest neighbor oxygen atoms, although the coordination number is, is, remains as six. It, 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 it's a six-fold coordination, but there are modifications to be adjusted. So what happens? This G excess mixing term essentially refers to that interaction of energy between iron and magnesium, say for example, or any particular a cation, say I and J, if they replace each other. Now you can very well imagine if the two replacing cations have identical charge and identical size, then the amount of energy required to replace one with the other is small. But if there is substantial differences in radius as well as charge, Let's say radius, if there is substantial radius, then what happens? Mixing A and B will take a larger amount of energy. Very logically so. So if there are two and I are two competing uh, two competing cations with the same uh, like iron and magnesium with a six-fold coordination, you replace iron by magnesium or magnesium by iron, there is some amount of energy that is be, that is going to be exchanged. And that is what we call as excess salt mixing of solid solution. Now, if the size difference is large, then obviously the amount of energy interactions for replacing iron and magnesium would be larger. Similar for very dissimilar cations. Now, if you have two cations that have different charges, Different lot. Say, for example, you take plagiar clay solid solution, where you have any and any, you have albite and anorthite. So you have CaAl2Si2O8, and you have any AlSi3O8. And you all know that the substitution is Ca plus uh, Al is equal to. Na plus Si. So this is 4 plus, 1 plus, Ca2 plus, Al3 plus. So if you replace anorthite by albite, that means you're taking out one calcium, one aluminium, and replacing it by a sodium and adding a silicon. So what is happening here is this side, which is the tetrahedral side, aluminium silicon ratio is 2 is to 2 in a non-part, but the same side contains aluminium is to silicon is 1 is to 3 ratio. So why? Because you wanted to replace Ca2 plus by Na1 plus. But remember, they have the same, ion, very similar ionic radius. Calcium and sodium has very, very small difference in ionic radius. 0.99 and 0.97 angstroms. That small is the difference. Yet, if you have to replace divalent cation by a so sodium ion in this site, which is a 10 fold site, but you require aluminium and silicon to change within another part of the crystal, which is the tetrahedral site. Now, that is very difficult. Why this change has to be done? To maintain electrical neutrality. So what happens? Even sometimes when you are changing the cations, which have very similar ionic radius, 
but they have differences in ironic, in differences in charge, then to, to help replace, you need a constitutional change somewhere else in the crystal structure, and that may not be easy. So what happens? The size and charge of the competing cations in a crystal structure in a solid solution becomes very, very critical. Why? Because the amount of energy that is required to replace the cations can be very, very dramatic. And so these values, this GX solution values, is highly variable and depends on the mineralogical structure of the solid solution. We all know that anorthite, but the say for example, if we take phosphorite, Mg2SiO4, and firelight, Fe2 plus SiO4, then this magnesium replaces this iron, but there is no change in the other side, because magnesium and iron have the same ionic radius. So what happens is, if you replace this, the energy interactions to replace magnesium iron, you can commonly say that this value should be small, the interactions, energy parameter that would require to replace magnesium and iron in olivine would be small compared to replacing calcium by sodium because it requires an aluminium silicon substitution somewhere else, which is much more difficult to do. So although the size is the same, but because of the charge difference, the W value becomes very, very large. So different minerals have different W values, uh, different magnitudes of solids. Now the very similar, a very simple model is this model. Where you consider GX a solid solution is equal to WAB into XA XB. Now you can see XA and XB, they do not have any dimension, they are whole fractions. So WAB, which is called the interaction parameter, this was coined by a very famous person called Margules, M A R G U L E S. So, some people call it the Margules parameter, but many people call nowadays an interaction parameter. But whatever it is, this W value is very crucial. It has the same unit as the free energy. That means WAB is essentially a uh, energy term. W value is an energy term. So an important, another important aspect before we go into more details, at the end members where say for example at XA is equal to 1, that means A, the solid solution comprises entirely of A, then XB is equal to 0. So if XB is equal to 0, G solid solution, X is fixed to be 0. Have you understood? Similarly, if you take XB equal to 1, then XA is equal to 0. And GXA solid solution is also equal to zero. So at the both end members, GXA solid solution is equal to zero. <coughs> and in this, the maximum value is where XA is equal to XB is equal to 0 0.5. So XA into XB becomes equal to 0 0.225. And that is the maximum value that you can get. So in this case, once again let me write it. In this case, G excess mixing has this type of a form. We will talk about this form later. But it is symmetric about at 0 0.5. This is A, this is B. This is A and this is A and this is B. So this is very symmetric across this. But this is not always the case. You can have graphs like this. 
where the mixing, non-ideal mixing or excess mixing is not symmetric at 0.5. You can also have curves which can be very complex. And as I told you, that is why this equation can change dramatically because depends on this nature of the graph. We have taken a very simple model where you take this term as symmetric. That means if you have A and you want to replace it by B, the energy that you read for is the same as B was there and you wanted to replace by A. The energy expenditure would be the same. They are perfectly balanced. So we will use this equation just to understand how things are working. You can make it all complex. It doesn't matter. So now, if you take the free energy solid solution, G solid solution now, it has three parts. Total free energy of the solid solution, if you take, there are three parts. G of mechanical mixing plus G of ideal mixing plus G of excess mixing. G of excess mixing. So any solid solution will comprise of three parts. G mechanical mixing, G ideal mixing and G excess mixing. What are these terms? G mixing is equal to XA GA0 as we did before plus XB GB0 plus now ideal mixing RT XA LNXA plus XB LNXB this is ideal mixing plus G another term G axis mixing this is RT XA LN gamma A plus XB LN gamma A have you understood? these are the three contributions now if you look a little more carefully I can show I can from this equation you see it is essentially a blown up blown up uh, what should I say uh, equation of the very simple equation that you learned about before it is if I take XA out then it becomes GA0 plus RT ln XA plus RT you see I have taken this term this term and this term plus XB and this is GB0 plus RT ln uh, XB plus RT ln gamma this is what it is when I took this term this term and this term if you now can see that essentially what we are writing G solid solution is equal to what is this term? it's a G A plus H B we are back to square one. Remember, XA GA plus XB GB. Why? Because GA is equal to GA0 plus RT ln activity A. Activity A means XA into them. So I will give you just a little bit to, uh, some little time, two, three, two, one minute or so, to think about it. It's, it's very simple and from now on we're going to more uh, try to analyze a little more. So it's very important that I, I, you understand. Solid solution is equal to free energy of mechanical mixing plus ideal mixing plus excess I Mechanical mixing, this I knew before, XAGA0 plus XBGB0. 
GI gel mixing is RTXA LNXA plus XB LNXB. Excess mixing, I just derived it in the morning, XA LN gamma A plus XB LN gamma A. If you take out now from the three, just put XA out, then it is GA0 plus RT LN activity A or have you understood? GA0 plus RT LN A plus GB0 plus RT LN A. Now GA0 plus RT LN A is nothing but GA. Have you understood? And this term is nothing but G. Remember the diagram that I did? I drew a tangent that the two points G A G B, these are the two points G A G B. And we are back to solid solution. So that is the equation of that line. Okay, I think we now go over to the next part. So you please remember this. So G mechanical mixing is XAGA0 plus XBGB0. This is the magnitude of the term. If I take G ideal mixing, it is RT into XA LNXA plus XB LNXA. Now this is important. For us, hydrodynamics. For us, what we do is, this is called, we are calling it free energy, free energy, free energy, but essentially it is called the free energy of formation. If you take it as a free energy of formation, then this value is negative. Free energy of formation, this value is negative. Now, this value overall is negative. Remember, these are also composition terms here. So, when we say G solid solution, we assume at a particular XA value, let's say we are talking of a particular XA G mechanical mixing is totally, is negative. Now, if you look at ideal mixing, ideal mixing, then this is the term. If it is, this is the term, and you are a solid solution, not XA is equal to 1, that means pure A, or XB equal to 1, which is pure B. Not like that. In the intermediate range of composition. XA and XB are both decimals. Yes or no? So if this is so, then ln of a decimal is negative. Right? So this term is negative. So this is negative mechanical mixture and you can well understand and we discussed this before. G ideal mixing makes it more negative. So a solid solution, ideal solid solution is more stable than a mechanical mixture. The only thing that I want to point out here and you listen to this very carefully. There is a term E here. So at a particular composition, you can see G ideal mixing will be more negative at higher temperatures. G of ideal mixing will be more negative at a higher temperature. So higher temperature promotes solid solution. Promotes solid. Because 
that magnitude of this negative value increases because as temperature increases. So, remember this. This term is negative and it becomes more negative at high temperatures. Now comes this term. Now, if we look at this term, it's better to look at this equation. WAB can be negative. WAB can be equal to zero. And WAB can be greater than zero. So we have several situations. It can be positive. It can be zero. It can be negative. Do you understand? This Marcuse parameter or W interaction parameter, it can have diverse values. It can have zero values. That means it does not, the solid solution is not a non-ideal solid solution. It is ideal solid solution. Not non-ideal solution because WAB is equal to zero. If WAB is equal to zero, then there is no excess mixing. If there is no excess mixing, no effect on the gamma terms, so it's, non it's not non-ideal mixing, it's ideal mixing. So when WAB is equal to zero, it is ideal mixing. And you can see here, it could be either positive or negative. Now you see here, we start with a zero value. Let's say if the value is zero, then the term has absolutely no effect on these two terms, have absolutely no effect on these two terms. So if GX, GX is mixing or WAB is equal to zero, then there is no effect of the excess mixing term or non-ideality on the effect of solid solution. Or, in another word, one can say, the mineral, this binary crystalline solution will allow mixing of the two components for the entire range. The mixing will be more higher as higher temperatures are reached. But you will, such solutions will always, such crystalline materials will always promote solid solutions at higher, at, at all times. Now we come to this negative. What happens if WAB is negative? Forget this one. Now. So we are now talking of non ideal solutions. Zero is ideal solution. We are talking of non ideal solutions. And here we first stop when it is negative. Now you see. What will happen? This is negative. This is negative, this is negative. Have you understood? So what is happening? In this type of systems, where G excess mixing is negative, it would promote solid solution. It would promote solid solution. Do you understand? If W has zero, then there is no non-ideality. The whole thing depends on these two things. If the crystalline solution has a negative WAB value, that means the solid solution, the non-ideality, adds to the negative magnitude of the G-solid solution, which means that the binary becomes more stable with the increasing non-ideality. With the problem, it becomes stable. Tell me, have you understood? Ah, you can't tell me. Yeah. So, so once more, before we go back, we will go into the third part that more crucial. If JXS mixing is zero or WAB is equal to zero, no non ideal mixing. There's only ideal mixing. And ideal solid solutions will be stable at all temperatures. If excess mixing is negative, 
then this term adds to the negative magnitude here. Negative magnitude here. So what will happen? So a solid solution will def this having this characteristic that a crystalline solution with a negative C excess mixing or a negative WAB value will always be a solid solution. Now we go to the third situation. Now this is where the catch is. We are here. So negative, negative, positive. Now you see there is a problem. Also remember, this negative terms becomes bigger at lower temperature, higher T. This I told you before. This negative term becomes higher at higher T. This positive term. Now you see the catch. If this positive term exactly compensates the negative term at a particular temperature, then what will happen? These two will cancel off and the total free energy of the system will be mechanical mixing. Have you understood? Yes or no? If this term has a magnitude same as this, then they will mutually cancel out. If they mutually cancel out, you will let with on the graph of mechanical mixing. So what will happen? What does this mean? On the curve of mechanical mixing, what will happen? You will have unmixing. Have you understood? If you have, you will have unmixed. This you know by the term exolution. So your uniform feldspar exhausts, K say K feldspar, exhausts to pathetic lamellies on cooling. That is exolution. That is a mechanical mixture that formed from a uniform chemical compound. Now you see in that case what is happening. As I told you, let this positive term compensate this negative term completely. Then you are on the mechanical mixing term. That means excellent. The two components cannot stay together. It's a divorce. It's a breakup. But if we had somewhat higher temperature, then this term would have been larger than this term, yes or no, if we had higher temperatures. So what would have happened if it was higher temperature, then this positive term would be smaller than this negative term. That means the speed, the mineral would behave as a solid solution. So what is happening? If you reduce the temperature, reduce the temperature, then what will happen? If you reduce the temperature, then what will happen is this term, ideal mixing term will become smaller and at a point of time the magnitude will be equal to this. The moment this happens, the mineral will exhaust. But at a higher temperature, it remains as a chemical compound. One A was not distinguishable from B, but when exolution occurs or unmixing occurs, then A can be physically separated from B. They are not part of the same phase, they are two phases. But when you have a, uh, a what should I say, a chemical compound, then A and B cannot be physically separated. So, it is important therefore to know now that X 
solution occurs in non-ideal systems only. Point number one. Yeah, point note kiya. Exolutions will occur in systems that are non-ideal. Where, but that is not all. Point number two. In that non-ideal solution, W value should be positive. So non-ideal solutions is all not enough. Non-ideal solution could also be negative W value. Does not serve your purpose. It should have a W value which is positive. So non-ideal solution with positive WAB value exhausts. While they are at higher temperature, they are chemically com uniform compositions. As temperature is lower, this magnitude becomes smaller. And at one point of time, it becomes equal to this, then it should exhaust. Third point, I have told you the first point, that it should be non-ideal solutions will exhaust. But not all non-ideal solutions, those with W values, non-idealities, but W values are greater than zero, they will exhaust. Not all non-ideal solutions. There are many non-ideal solutions that will not exhaust. Because WAB is negative, less than zero. Now, the third point. Higher the magnitude of W positive WAB, higher the magnitude of positive W value, the greater chance of the solid solution to exhaust. There is a greater chance of the solid solution to exhaust. These are the three points. One point, the solution has to be non-ideal. Second point, the solution, non-ideality, but WAB is positive. Number three point, WAB should be, should have a high magnitude. Should have a higher magnitude. Higher the magnitude, the greater is the chance for non-ideality. Now, have you got this point down? Now you see. Let's take a case. Iron and magnesium replacing each other in a crystalline solution. They have the same charge and close enough uh, uh, ionic radius. The chances of such systems showing non-ideality is low. Why? Because W values are likely to be very low. Interaction parameters are likely to be very low. Have you understood? These interaction parameters are likely to be very small. So the chances are that the ideal mixing term will always dominate the excess mixing terms for cations that have same charge and same radius or similar radius. But for solid solutions, but for solid solutions, where the charge is the same, but the size difference is very large, the size difference is very large, there you would require high WAV values. High W values. Can you give me an can you give me an example? Say for example, you know this. Mineral, I think all of you should know. Mg, Mg, Si206. This is called orthorhombic pyroxene or called orthopyroxene. It is named as enstatite. And say you have Ca, Mg, Si206. Now what happens? This calcium has an ionic radius of 0 0.99 angstroms. And this magnesium has an ionic radius 
of 0 0.66 angstroms. So if you see here, these two magnesiums have no problem. Only thing, these two magnesiums have a problem because the size difference is more than 33%. 33%. You see 0 0.99 divided by 0 0.66, 0 0.66 divided by 0 0.19, it is two-third. That means one-third ionic radius less. So you can imagine that calcium has a much more ionic size than magnesium. So if, although both have by one, but the charge difference, the size difference is very large. So such differences would be associated with high WAB values. Chances are they will exhaust. Actually, they have an immiscibility gap. They have an immiscibility gap. Now this is not a course in mineralogy. We could have gone in great details into the position, the octahedral position, everything. But we, we can't we can't do that. But what I am saying is just try to infer that if you have this type of substitution, this is no problem. But the problem is here. Two same charge cations, very large difference in ionic radius. 0 0.99 angstrom, 0 0.66 angstrom. One third less. So this will cause WAB values to be very high. So the chances are you will get extinguished. The other case that I said was of Albite and plagiot, uh, albite and an albite, NaLSI3O8, and in sodium, in ionic radius is 0 0.97, calcium ionic radius is 0 0.99. Ionic radius is very close, almost identical, but there's a huge charge difference. Sodium monovalent, calcium divalent. So this would require another replacement elsewhere in the crystal structure and the replacement is of aluminium by silicon two elements which don't like each other they are very stubborn in their positions so what happens plagioclase commonly shows exolution plagioclase plagioclase there are many uh, you have, you think that plagioclase has, does not have exolution plagioclase have lots of exolution you are only shown the high temperature plagioclases, that is why you don't see, but at lower temperature, plagioclases show tremendous amount of exolutions. There are about three exolutions, Bergold, Hutton Locker, and there are three more solid solutions at different lower, lower temperatures, of course. At high temperatures, they are great friends, they are great friends, but as the pressure builds on, because of the lowering of temperature, they separate out because they cannot be this albite. This plagioclase and uh, this sodium and calcium cannot be accommodated in the same crystal structure. So, what is important I am trying to tell you here is that the minerals mineralogy controls how minerals will behave thermodynamically, how they will behave at different temperatures. You can quantify it. We will. Pro, achha, there is before this one thing, uh, for a very good reading, I will suggest to you that you read the book by Putnis, P-U-T-N-I-S. The name of the book is Mineral Physics. And if you go to the end part of it and you see a solution, you will get at the place where I taught. In fact, you will find this equation. And there is a very good description of this point that I have taught in the book by Putnis. It's a marvelous description and I advise all of you to read it. Okay? Thank you very much.